Hey. So it's snowing outside. <laughs> We're supposed to get like six inches of snow today or something. I live in Kansas City, Missouri, if any of you are wondering. Um, and it's very pretty. It's like snowing cats and dogs right now. It's crazy. But yeah, snow is really pretty. Hmm. Okay, um, I am on the rider on the white horse. I mean, <laughs> that's what section I'm in right now. Revelations 19, so. Okay. The rider on the white horse. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. This is Jesus. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire. And on his head are many crowns. Crown him with many crowns. The lamb upon the throne. <laughs> I grew up with that song. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. I wonder what that is. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood. And his and his name is the word of God. Yes. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. John 1. That's the next book that I like to dissect and look at is the book of John. I think that's the most theologically rich book in the Bible besides Revelations. And it's intense, which is funny that they always tell new believers to read the Gospel of John because I think it's pretty hard to understand. So it's my next algebra equation for myself to um, solve, kind of. Okay, so this is Jesus. Jesus is referred to as the Word, which is interesting because our Bible's scripture is the Word. So I have a theory that Jesus kind of is our Bibles. Not that we should worship our Bibles, but the Word of God is living and active, so something to keep in mind. Okay, the armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses. I'm not sure if these are angels or us Christians. And dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of, out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. This could be referring to, like, um, the Bible is living and active, sharper than a double-edged sword. Um, but I don't know why Scripture is living and active, sharper than a if Scripture, if he uses Scripture to strike down the nations. And then it says, a quote, he will rule them with an iron scepter. Wow, it's snowing really hard. <laughs> Looks like a blizzard. Crazy. It looks like, you know, those like snow globes. Here, I'll try and show you. People, internet, if you would like to see. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Hmm, kind of. Anyways. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. Silliness. <laughs> okay, um... Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, <laughs> which I saw a YouTube video about tattoos and how, like, tattoos are okay for Christians, and it says, it, he talks about this verse, like, look, Jesus had a tattoo, which, maybe. On his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. King of kings, mm -hmm, and Lord of lords, hallelujah, hallelujah. And if you really think about this phrase, it means that he is the supreme king. He is king over any other king. So, Jesus is the supreme ruler, obviously, because he's God. So, yes. And that means no one, no earthly king can have more power than him. So, okay. <laughs> My hair's bothering me. Okay. Um, and I saw an angel standing in the sun who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in midair, Come, gather together for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and mighty men of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all people, free and slaves, small and great. Interesting. An angel crying to all the birds. The birds are usually referred to as evil spirits in the Bible. 
So it's like an angel is telling the fallen angels, come and feast on any human being left on the earth. Interesting. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against the rider on the horse and his armies. The beast being the Antichrist, which could be Obama. But the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who had performed the miraculous signs on his behalf. With these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. Because uh, he's probably pretending to be Jesus and people believe him. <laughs> The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. That's hell, um, obviously. It's referred to as the lake of fire. So, that is their future. The rest of them were killed with the sword that came out of the mouth of the rider on the horse. And all the birds gorged themselves, gorged themselves on their flesh. Interesting. Um, okay, so the sword, the sword that came out of his mouth, I don't know if that's referring to just scripture because it says um, sharper than a double-edged sword so I don't know if this is a literal war like a flesh and blood war or if this is um, a debate war or I'm not sure exactly what this looks like but okay then the thousand years uh, Revelation 20 and I saw an angel coming out of heaven having the key to the abyss and holding in his hand a great chain he seized the dragon, the ancient serpent, who is a devil, or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. I don't know why he's only bound for a thousand years, but that's interesting. He threw him into the abyss, unlocked, and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. I wrote next to that, why? Question mark. Yeah. Who knows? I have no idea. But the abyss, hell, hell is thought to be in the center of the earth. So, there you go. The abyss is the center of the earth. I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony for Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his image. Hence, Christians will be there. I don't know if it's us or those that get saved in the tribulation. Could be us. And had not received his mark on their foreheads or their hands. So somehow they still ate food. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So pros and cons. Every cloud is a silver lining. Uh, those who don't receive the mark of the beast will have issues with food, getting food, obviously. But then, uh, and if they're beheaded, uh, that part sucks, but they'll get to reign with Christ in a thousand years. So I don't know if this will end up being me. But Paul says to live as Christ, to die is gain, right? So, and beheading... I know I'm talking about this coldly, but beheading is probably one of the best ways to die because it's instant. Like, I've always feared being burned or drowning because that would be slow, but beheading would be okay. Being shot would be the best, I think, right in the chest. <laughs> then you can die quickly. Okay, that's enough talking about death. <laughs> um, okay. So, those who are beheaded will rule with Christ in a thousand years. Pretty cool. They hit, so, yeah, he says, I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. That's cool. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. Interesting. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who have part in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. So the idea is the rest of the world is still alive at this time, and they're still on the earth. Um, and they are ruled over by those who are beheaded in the tribulation. <laughs> okay, uh, Satan's doom, chapter 20. When the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison. Why? I don't know. I have a side note here. Hell is originally made for Satan, not us. Uh, but because of our free will, we brought it on ourselves. Okay. So Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. So these are the uh, non-believers who are still alive on the earth. 
in number, they are like the sand on the seashore. So they're still going to be alive for a thousand years. So trippy. They marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people, the city he loves, I'm guessing Jerusalem. But fire came down from heaven and devoured them, and the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Okay. So, a thousand years will be interesting, but um, it doesn't give any more details about what that will look like. But, yes thousand years hmm. it's a long time <laughs> obviously the dead are judged <clears throat> revelations 20 then i saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it god earth and sky fled from his presence and there was no place for them and i saw the dead great and small standing before the throne and books were opened another book was opened which is the book of life <laughs> i wonder what these other first books are and books were opened. Is that like a history book of each person's life? I don't know. Because then it says another book was opened, which is the book of life. For some reason, I always just thought there's just one book, the book of life. And if your name's written in it, you go to heaven. If it's not, you go to hell. But there's other books too. Interesting. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. There you go, history books. So everything you do is being recorded. Creepy. <laughs> Yeah, that's intense. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. So, graveyards. Um, and each person was judged according to what he had done. I have an, an asterisk mark next to that, as in, be careful what you do. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death hell if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life he was thrown into the lake of fire um again i have a video about losing one's salvation i think it is possible to have your name written in the book of life and then erased jesus says in revelations something about a letter to the churches and i will not blot out their name from the book which raises the question your name can be blotted out Here's an example, um, the prodigal son story that Jesus tells is obviously about a Christian because once we're saved, we're sons of God, right? If the prodigal son died when he was away, where would he go? Would he go to heaven or hell? The answer is hell because because he had fallen away. God, Jesus says after the Lord's Prayer, if you forgive others their sins against you, your Father in Heaven will forgive you. If you do not forgive um, others that sins against you, your Father in Heaven will not forgive you, which is pretty harsh, right? Because that's, yeah, if He doesn't forgive you, then how do you go to Heaven? So there you go. There you have it. There's two sides to the coin as far as that. <laughs> I pointed out the verse to my stepdad once. I've had debates with him, but I pointed out uh, for nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God, you know? And he was like, well, that's the love of God. That's not necessarily your salvation and God. And I was like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> God will always love us. He loves everyone. He loves the entire world. For God to love the world, for he sent his only son. He loves us all, but he doesn't save us all. So, okay. Revelations 21. The New Jerusalem. Da, 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 da. What's funny is people don't realize heaven will be a city. It will be. We're not going to live in some countryside, like green grass. We're going to live in a city. Second thing is we will live on this earth forever. It'll just be a glorified earth. We will have bodies forever, just like we do now. They'll just be glorified bodies. But we will live on this earth. It'll just be a new heaven and a new earth. So, yes, that is interesting. People always think that we're going to like float up to some other universe. But, you know, this is, uh, <laughs> this is it. So the New Jerusalem. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. 
for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. So it's redone. It's like second model, take two. <laughs> and there was no longer any sea. So that's interesting. For whatever reason, it's all land. Well, I guess this could be another galaxy or dimension. Who knows? There was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Prepared as a bride. Beautifully dressed for her husband. That's cool. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men. And he will live with them, as it was in the Garden of Eden. God walked with Adam. So we'll go back to the beginning at the end. <laughs> and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and will be there and be their God. I love this verse. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, come. This will be awesome. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Praise God. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes, warning, as in there will be some who are Christians who won't overcome. If we overcome, we will get all this. So be strong and courageous, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Yes, and overcome. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> it's from Water Boy. Okay. Um, to him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes will inherit this, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But the cowardly... Don't be cowardly, which is so like, there's such a notion among Christians that we need to be nice and quiet and meek. I mean, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth, but we can't be cowardly. Jesus wasn't cowardly. Peter wasn't. Look at Acts, which is probably what I'll study next. He was very bold when he got up and spoke. I mean, wow. <laughs> and Jesus, I mean, come on. He was like practically slapping people around with his words. <laughs> I mean, he was intent, so here's what it says. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters and all liars, be careful of lying. It's not an easy sin, it's bad. Their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. It's crazy because he lists all these intense things like murderers, magic arts, obviously but then the cowardly <laughs> so like uh you're lukewarm you're ne neither hot nor cold so i'll spit you out of my mouth we need to be careful of that being lukewarm being cowardly be bold and courageous there's a good verse for god did not give you a spirit of timidity but a spirit of power and of a sound mind or in wisdom so remember that one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me come i will show you the bride the wife of the lamb and he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city jerusalem coming down out of heaven from god how cool it shone with the glory of god and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel like a grant like a jasper clear as crystal i love that uh description clear as crystal i love crystal like those little crystal figurines I always wanted to have like a glass case and collect them because they're just so pretty. It had a great high wall with 12 gates. Uh, 12 is significant, like the 12 tribes of Israel. Um, 12 gates and with 12 angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There you go. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. I don't know why, that's just how it is. The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the land. Nice. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city was laid out like a square as long as it was wide. He measured the city with 
the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length, which I have a footnote says that is about 1,400 miles. It's pretty big. And as wide and high as it is long. Hmm. That's high. So the walls are that high too. Those are some really high walls, man. He measured its wall and it was 144 cubits thick. What I always wonder is why does it need to be so thick and high? We're keeping out something. But I thought the goats were thrown into the lake of fire. But there's a verse at the end that says, The kings of the earth brought their wealth into it. Who are the kings of the earth? I don't know. It's very mysterious. So it's 144 cubits thick by man's measurement, which the angel was using. Cubits is supposed to be from uh, your elbow to your fingertip. It's a cubit. There's a funny uh, skit by <laughs> Bill Cosby. Uh, right. It's titled, and it's about Noah. He talks about it. He's like, what's a cubit? It's funny. Um, the wall was made of jasper in the city of pure gold. As pure as glass. I love that description. The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz. That's my first time, topaz. The, te the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth ameth amethyst. <laughs> The 12 gates were 12 pearls. That's interesting because they're going to be really high gates. So that's a huge pearl that the gates carved out of. Each gate made of a single pearl. <laughs> the great street of the city was of pure gold like transparent glass. How cool. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. Nice. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it for the glory of God gives it light and the Lamb is its lamp. A good book on this... Um, Dante's Divine Comedy. I read the first one, Inferno or Hell, when I was in high school. And then when I was in the honors program, we read the the Divine Comedy, all three. And Paradiso is the last one, and it kind of gives this image. Honestly, I kind of skimmed that book, but it's um, supposed to portray what heaven might be like. And it talks about it being really, really bright. Um, like, blindingly bright. That's the main thing I remember from that book. Lots of light. And that's what this is talking about, so. Okay. Um, the nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. That's the verse that I was talking about. Who are the kings of the earth? Where did they come from? Are they non-Christians? Are they Christians? <laughs> are they the goats or the sheep at the white throne? I don't know. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Who lives in the nations? That's what I want to know. It's a mystery, though. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful. How can believers who are in heaven do things that are shameful or deceitful? I don't know that either, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So, does this mean that Christians are still intermixing with non-Christians in heaven? Because if the kings of the earth and the nations, it sounds like they're not saved because they can't come into this new Jerusalem. Only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So are those whose names are written in the Book of Life, do they stay in the city or do they go out and come in? And they have this like little card that they can swipe <laughs> to get in. I don't know. It's really, really interesting. It's a puzzle. Revelations is a puzzle. That's why I wanted to read it. <laughs> but no one can make perfect, perfect sense of it. The River of Life, chapter 22. This is the last chapter. Almost done. 
Okay, the river of life. And then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal. Lots of allusions to crystal. Very pretty. Flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great streets of the, of the city. So there will be water. That's good. Even though there will be no sea, that's interesting. I wonder why it takes away the ocean and this new earth. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. That's interesting, too. The leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. So there's obviously still some ministry going on here in heaven, in the new Jerusalem, the new heaven and the new earth. So trippy. So I'm guessing those of us who have our names written in the book of life will primarily be in the city, but we'll take, I would think, the leaves of these trees out to the nations to for their healing, and maybe we'll still witness to them. So does that mean that they'll get a second chance? But then what about the great white throne? Where, <laughs> so the last half of Revelations, I just have questions, not information for you guys, obviously. Uh, but the dead are judged, the great white throne. It says, um, I'll be judged according to what they have done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. But then who are these people that are in the nations of the earth? In the new earth? I don't know. So, okay. The leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. Whatever that means. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. I think that's us Christians who are, whose names are written in the book of life. They will see his face. Finally, we'll get to see God's face. Very cool. And his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light. And they will reign forever and ever. <laughs> Next to that, I wrote, wow, with three exclamation points. <laughs> forever and ever is a long time. It's a concept we can't wrap our mind around, really, because we're finite beings. We don't grasp time. There's a good chapter in the book, Augustine's Confessions, that I recommend to you. There's a whole chapter on time that I remember. In one of my college classes, we went through a chapter a week. Um, and the chapter on time was really interesting because um, God is outside of time. But it's, it's so trippy to think about time. <laughs> okay, so they'll reign forever and ever. It's a long time, obviously. The angel said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Soon is a relative term, obviously, because John saw all this 2,000 years ago. Jesus is coming. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy in this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things, and when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. He, but he said to me, Do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and of all who keep the words of this book, worship God. Then he told me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, because the time is near. Near is relative to. Let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Interesting. Let him who is vile continue to be vile. Let him who does right continue to do right. And let him who is holy continue to be holy. Okay. Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. The reward is the crown of life. Well, my mom has this theory and her church talked about it that there will be rewards in heaven based on what we've done. So, like, for example, Mother Teresa will have, like, the biggest mansion in heaven. <laughs> shall be on the, the rich street. <laughs> so there will be various rewards, I think, and I agree. And I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. These are those who wash. I wonder if these videos will give me a bigger... <laughs> Not that that's why I'm doing it, but maybe it'll give me a bigger reward. That'd be cool. <laughs> 
Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Hmm. Let me read that again. <laughs> Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Okay, so those are Christians, those whose, are, whose name is written in the Book of Life. Outside are the dogs. Outside of where? And why aren't they in the lake of fire? Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. Wow, trippy. I will say that... Remember that parable about Lazarus. Lazarus was the poor man who sat at the gate and he was blind. I think he was a blind beggar. Anyways, Jesus tells the story of Lazarus, the poor man, and then the rich man. Both of them die. Lazarus goes to heaven. The rich man goes to hell. The rich man in hell can see Lazarus in heaven. And he talks to God, I think, or an angel or something, the rich man in hell, and he says, please go back and tell uh, my brothers or something about hell. And the angel or God or Jesus says, even if someone comes back from the dead, they will not listen. Anyways, the point being, the rich man can see Lazarus in heaven, which is interesting because I always saw them as being like, light years apart i thought heaven and hell were like completely separated but according to this it says a new heaven and a new earth the lake of fire it's possible the lake of fire is just outside of the new jerusalem like they're right next to each other i don't know why if i was god i would <laughs> i would put them in two different solar systems but pretty sad they'll be like our neighbors so we'll all be neighbors in eternity. The question is, what side of the wall will you be on? It sounds like crazy, man. So, um, man, that's seeing things with new eyes. Praise God. <laughs> okay, so, because he says, outside are the dogs, outside of the city, I'm guessing. Those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. Beware of being false or lying. Satan is the father of lies. Remember that? Okay. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. I like that. That he's described as a morning star. That's cool. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. <laughs> I think I hear. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Amen. I would like the free gift of the water of life. <laughs> I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If, oh, this verse is good. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. <laughs> I put, yeah, Calvin. <laughs> I didn't really like John Calvin in college. Um, but, well, obviously he put out this total heresy of the whole God electing. I mean, there's the verse, the language of election in the Bible, but I don't think God elects certain people and damns others. That's just doesn't seem just. Anyways. Another thought on that, if anyone adds to them, God will add to them the plagues described in this book as the words, the Book of Mormon, they add to it. Even the Amplified Bible, that adds words to scripture. That's wrong, I feel. I know Joyce Meyer quotes the Amplified Bible a lot, which always bothers me. Um, the message is, in, it's not a translation, it's a paraphrase. It's not even close to the Bible. If you look up, just Google the message, John 3, 16, and then compare it with other translations, it's like so off. It's really frustrating. I used to work in a Christian bookstore, and we had copies of The Message by the front counter. And this one lady grabbed like five copies, and she's like, I'll give this to all of my children. And I was like, no. <laughs> I just wanted to like yell, like, please don't buy this. It's not the Bible. 
and then people think they're reading the Bible when they're not. It's so frustrating. So I know people bash the NIV that I've been reading out of, but it's a heck of a lot closer than, obviously, than the message. So, anyways, I think the NIV is fine. God has not told me otherwise, and I think he would if it was bad, per se. Okay, so if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. Scary, that's like the plagues, well, that Revelation talks about and that Moses did. So. And if anyone takes words away from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share in the tree of life. Again, can we lose our salvation? Sounds like it. Why else would he say he'll take it away? That means that person once had it. So, be careful of tampering with the Bible. There's some denomination or religion where they cut scriptures out, or they cut books out, or something. Yeah, that's pretty scary. Anyways. Um, they'll take, he'll take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. Okay. Um, he who testifies to this, to these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. And then I wrote at the end, come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. It's one of my favorite worship songs. Um, it goes, uh, come, Lord Jesus, come. This video is at 36 minutes. All right, so I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, thus concludes my revelation study. I finished in like, what, two days? <laughs> I think I've gone through all of re revelations in two days doing these videos. Um, anyways, next I think I'll do Acts or John. I'm not sure which one yet. Whichever one would have the most hard things to unpack because, you know, I want, I want, my goal in making these videos is to help people understand things that they wouldn't understand on their own. And I feel like God gives me eyes to see and has enlightened my, the eyes of my heart to see stuff. So I'm just passing that along. And hopefully I'm correct in my postulations. <laughs> but who knows? I mean, nobody can say for sure what any of this means. I mean, we'll know it when we see it, you know. A lot of snow hitting the ground. That's cool. Anyways, um, I hope this benefits you. I hope it edifies you. I hope it helps you grow in the fear of the Lord. Those are my goals in making this. <sighs> I hope it. If you're, if if it if if Babylon is America, I pray that these videos will open people's eyes and save them from coming destruction. Like Noah was rescued before the flood. I pray God will rescue his people from as much as possible. I mean, we'll still go through some stuff, but. And I pray that this will strengthen your faith so that you will not fall away because there supposedly will be a lot that will be deceived in the last days. But if you are rooted in the word, Colossians talked about, and you being rooted and grounded in love something about you will no longer be like infants tossed by the waves the cunning and craftiness of men and their deceitful scheming and false doctrines and stuff so main thing to keep in mind if any doctrine or person or religion denies that jesus is the son of god you can know that they're false so okay i hope this has made you stronger spiritually it's like running a spiritual marathon <laughs> Paul says, even if I am being poured out as a drink offering, I feel like this has been that, but, you know, it's all God. I hope God's been speaking through me. I'm happy to serve. <laughs> so, okay, um, I'll pray to conclude this, and it's been nice talking to whoever watches this <laughs> about Revelations. I looked at my, the history of my videos. 28 people have viewed my testimony video, which is cool. That was like the one I thought would get least viewed. And then some of these, like 10 people have viewed it. So that's cool. I just made them. So I hope a lot more people see them. Okay, I'm gonna pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you. Thank you so much for Revelation. Thank you that this task is complete. Thank you that you will give me wisdom with your other books. I pray for your protection around anyone watching this, that by the power and blood of Jesus, Saint be gone from any spiritual attack that would come against these videos or come against the understanding. I pray that this seed that I'm throwing out through these videos will go deep and produce roots and fruit and that it won't fall on rocky soil or thorny soil. God, I pray that it would fall on good soil. I pray people would prepare their hearts. I pray that you would soften their hearts, give them eyes to see and ears to hear. I pray that the worries and cares of this life would not choke out anything that they learn from what you have revealed to me and helped me to teach through these videos. I pray we would all grow in a fear of you, that you would prepare us for the last days, as I think they are right around the corner. I pray you would give us strength and faith and peace, your peace that passes all understanding and help us to find other Christians to lean on and to unite together with and be like the early church where everyone had everything in common and supported each other to get through this mark of the beast stuff with not being able to buy food and stuff. So, um, thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your peace. Help us all to walk in love, joy, peace patience, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And may we grow in these things more and more every day. May we be sanctified more and more and go from glory to greater glory and to be conformed to the image of your son, Jesus Christ, which also means being bold witnesses and being in people's faces, I think, when we need to. Help us to be bold. Help us to not be cowardly, God. <sighs> That's the prayer of my heart. Okay. In the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Um, okay. I hope these videos have blessed you. <laughs> Read Revelations for yourself. Read it 20 times if you want. That's what I did with poems in high school. If I didn't understand a poem, I just read it like 20 times. <laughs> and then the more you read it, the more it, you know you see stuff. I've read really Revelations maybe not 20, maybe like 10 or 15 times, but the more I read it, the more I see. So, yeah. <laughs> so I hope God opens your eyes um, to things that he's opened my eyes to. So, anyways, thanks for watching. I appreciate you watching. Because I, I didn't put tons of work into this, but I did put some. So, <laughs> okay. Um, God bless. Take care. Grace and peace be with you.